All right, this next pro tip was inspired by a question that I got a while back. I've actually gotten it a few times since then, which is how do I create a drop down or data validation menu that's dependent upon another one? So, in other words, how do I create a primary drop down and then a dependent one where the list will change based on the user selection? And it's an excellent question and a great opportunity to use a function called indirect. So this is a four star tip, definitely getting a little towards the advanced end of the spectrum, but let me walk you through how this is going to work. So essentially we can use indirect combined with data validation rules to create those drop down lists that update based on a user selection. So we're going to run through three steps here in our demo. We're going to start by creating individual lists containing all sets of possible selections. So we've got our primary dropdown, which in this case is the season, either summer or winter. And then we've got the lists that could potentially populate the second or dependent dropdown, which is the list of summer specific sports and winter specific sports. So once you've created those lists of unique values that capture those possible selections, step two is to turn those into actual named ranges. You can use the name manager in your formulas tab, or you can simply type the name right in the name box to the left of the formula bar. So if you look at the two options in the primary dropdown, summer or winter, you're going to want to match that wording exactly. So instead of summer sports or winter sports, we're using those exact words, summer and winter. And then from there, all we're going to do is create our dropdowns, our primary and our secondary, and then configure the list source or the secondary dropdown, the dependent dropdown, to reference that first cell as part of an indirect function. Now I'm going to talk about exactly why and how we do this when we get into the demo, but that's the quick summary of the approach that we're about to take. So some common use cases here, creating dynamic reports with multiple user inputs with data validation, or perhaps more commonly, configuring your dropdown lists to prevent users from selecting invalid combinations of options. So in this particular demo, that's exactly what we're doing. We don't want a user to be able to select the summer season and ice hockey or alpine skiing as the sport because whatever cells are dependent upon these data validation selections, they'll obviously just show up as blank in those cases. So enough talk, enough theory. Let's go roll up our sleeves, head to our pro tips workbook and build some dependent dropdowns. All right, so from your table of contents tab, you're going to look for the dependent dropdowns demo in our green formula section, four star tip, go ahead and click link, jump to the tab. And what you'll see here is we've got some Olympic athlete data broken down by seasons and by sports in columns A and B with the athlete names in column C. And I've added just kind of a blank template or placeholder where we're going to populate our information in order to create these two dropdown cells, the season which is our primary dropdown, and the sport, which is our dependent dropdown. In other words, we want this sport dropdown to display a list of either summer or winter sports, depending on what's been selected here in cell F3. And then I've added a formula here, number of athletes. This is just a countifs function that says, okay, let's count the rows given these two criteria so that we can see the number of athletes for a given sport and season. So with that, let's get started. Step one is to simply populate all of our lists, right? And we're gonna start with season for our primary dropdown. Only two values here, it's as simple as that. Summer, winter, I'll just type them in manually. It's probably the quickest way. And now to get the unique summer sports and winter sports, a few ways to do it. We could use the advanced filter option, which we covered in another pro tip. Or in this case, all I'm gonna do is filter my source data here. Let's only look at summer. I'm going to grab cell B2 and control shift arrow down to select the entire column of values. Control C to copy, go back up, select I2 and control V to paste. And then in my data tab, I'm going to remove duplicates and continue just with that current selection in column I. Press remove. Okay. And there you go. We have 36 unique summer sports listed here. And we're going to follow that same process for the winter sports. So instead of filtering on summer, filter on winter, grab the first value, control shift arrow down, control C to copy. Now I'm going to scroll up, 
and we're going to need to unfilter this so we can get access to row 2 again. Clear that filter, select J2, control V to paste, data, remove duplicates, and remember to continue just with that current selection and press remove. So there we go, we got 15 unique winter sports. So there you have it, step one is complete. We've got our unique list of options. Now step two is to actually give these lists meaningful names. So what we're gonna do is select all of our summer sports first, all the way through wrestling. And the easiest way to do this uh, is not to go through formulas, define name, but to simply type the name right here in the name box to the left of the formula bar. And remember, I want to name it exactly consistent with my primary dropdown. So summer, enter. Same thing with winter, select those sports. Name this one winter, enter. And that's step two. Final step is to actually set up our dropdowns here in F3 and F5. So our first one, our season selection, very, very simple. We're going to go to data, data validation. We're going to allow a list here, and that list contains our two seasons. Press OK. So now you can select summer or winter. There you go. Now here's the key. It all hinges on this, right? Because this sport selection in F5, when we head to data validation, we're going to allow a list like we normally would. But instead of selecting a range, which would create a fixed reference to a range that wouldn't change, it wouldn't be dynamic, this is where we need to use that indirect function. And what we're trying to do is we're going to indirect and reference cell F3. Now before I hit OK, what we're doing here is we're telling Excel, hey, look at cell F3. You're going to see a word, either summer or winter. By using indirect, what we're telling Excel is that there's more to it. It's not just a text string that has the word summer or winter. Those words are more meaningful. They're actual defined workbook objects. So by using indirect, we're telling Excel to actually treat those as the named ranges that they are. And when we press OK, we've got summer selected. Take a look. The dropdown contains all of our summer sports and none of our winter sports, right? And if we change this to winter, now take a look. Alpine skiing, biathlon, bobsleigh. These are our winter sports all the way down to speed skating. So that indirect function is able to recognize this word as a named range and populate the right list accordingly. So now take a look. We've got our little athlete counter telling us there were 645 alpine skiers in the winter games. We can switch it over to summer and select one of our summer sports like baseball, 191 athletes. So there you have it. This is one of my favorite tips in the course because it's not that hard, but it's extremely powerful and a really great option when you're creating dynamic reports and dashboards. So there you go, creating dependent data validation dropdowns using the indirect function.